If you ask a disagreeable person what he wants or she wants, they'll tell you right away. They know, this is what I want and this is how I'm gonna get it. But agreeable people, especially if they're really agreeable, are so agreeable that they often don't even know what they want. Cause they're so accustomed to living for other people and to finding out what other people want and to trying to make them comfortable and so forth. That is harder for them to find a sense of their own desires as they move through life. There are situations where that's advantageous, but it's certainly not advantageous if you're going to try to forge yourself a career. That just doesn't work at all. So let's say that we're going to play repeated trading games. And if you're very agreeable, then you're gonna bargain harder on my behalf. Then you're gonna bargain on your own behalf. Whereas if you're disagreeable, you're gonna do the reverse. You're gonna think, I'm in this trading game for me, and you're gonna take care of your own interest. Whereas an agreeable person is gonna say, this has to be 50 fifths but I'd like to help you every way I can. One of the things you have to be careful of, if you're agreeable, is not to be exploited, because you'll line up to be exploited. And one of the things that happen very often in psychotherapy, people come to psychotherapy for multiple reasons, but one of them is they often come because they're too agreeable. And so what they get is so-called assertiveness training. Although it's not exactly assertiveness that's being trained. What it is, is the ability to learn how to negotiate on your own behalf. And one of the things I tell agreeable people is, say what you think. Tell the truth about what you think. There's going to be things you think that are nasty and harsh. And they probably are nasty and harsh. But they are also probably true and you need to bring those up to the forefront and deliver the message. And it's not straightforward at all because agreeable people do not like conflict. Not at all. They smooth the water. They don't want fights to break out. They don't want anything to disturb the relative peace. You know. And if you're also more prone to being hurt, physically, and perhaps emotionally, you're also may be loath to engage in the kind of high-intensity conflict that would solve problems in the short term, because it takes a lot of conflict to solve problems in the short term. And you know, if that can spiral up to where is dangerous, which it can if it gets uncontrolled, it may be safer in the short term to keep the water smooth and to not dive into those situations where conflict emerges. The problem with that is, it's not a very good medium to long-term strategy, right? Cause there's a lot of times there are things you have to talk about because they're not gonna go away. And the advantage to having a well-socialized disagreeable person is that they really don't let much get in their way. So if you can get a kid who's disagreeable socialized, that person can be quite a creature because they're very forward moving in their nature and very difficult to stop. It's really useful to investigate the viewpoints of people who have opposing views to yours, because they'll tell you things not only you don't know, but they'll also tell you how to see the world in ways that you don't see it. And they'll also have skills that you don't have, that you could develop. So, for example, if you're an introverted person, it's very useful to watch an extroverted person because the extroverted person has ways of being in the social world that aren't natural to you, that you can use as to improve your toolkit. You know, I think we have a very wide range of propensities within us. Some are switched on, genetic propensities. But I think that if you put yourself in the right situation or walk yourself through the right exercises, you can switch some of these other things on as well. But it takes work and dedication and discipline, too. I would say, generally speaking, if you want to adapt yourself properly to life, you should find an itch in the environment that corresponds with your temperament. You shouldn't work at cross-purposes to your temperament because it's just too damn difficult. 
But having done that, then you should work on developing the skills and viewpoints that exist in the space, opposite to your personality, because that's where you're fundamentally underdeveloped. Now I think you can extend out your temperamental capability across a wider range. And to me that's roughly equivalent as bringing a richer toolkit to each situation, you know. So if you're hyper extroverted, you should probably learn to shut up in parties now and then and listen just to see what's going on, to see if you can manage it. And if you're introverted, well, then you should learn how to speak in public and to learn how to go to parties without hiding in the corner and saying nothing to anyone. And if you're agreeable, then you need to learn how to be disagreeable so people can't push you around. And if you're disagreeable, you need to learn how to be agreeable. This is Joe Academy. If you like this video, click the like button and hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching this video and have a great day.